Hi, this is Professor Most. The purpose of this video is to show you how to build the Bulldog Face Distortion Pedal. But not only that, what I'd like to do is try to relate the circuitry inside this pedal to what we teach in our 211 class. So many of you watching this video are students of mine in 211. And if you look ahead to Lab 3, you'll notice that Lab 3 in 211 is a three-stage amplifier lab, and so this is uh, a printout that you can get yourself online and we have three transistors that create a three-stage amplifier. Now that same three-stage amplifier is used in this Bulldog Face pedal and so going through this hopefully you'll see some applications of what we do in lab in something real, something that you can build, something that you can use. And for those of you that are not in my 211 class this might serve just as a tutorial on how to build a distortion pedal or maybe get you interested in what we do in the EET and CNS curriculum here at Fair State University. So I invite you to take a look at this video to look and understand what we are doing and maybe ask me some questions. Send me an email, make some comments. Uh, I want you to feel that electronics is fun, it's something that you can understand, something that you can expand upon, and it's not just stuff that you do in lab that's very boring, that seems monotonous and drawn out, that what we're doing is actually fun. And the theory behind what we do is some things that we can apply to our everyday life and maybe even make something fun like a distortion pedal. And so the schematic for uh, the bulldog face, as you can see here, and I'll show you a better picture of this later in uh, the, the video if you don't have access to, to my labs, is the same three-stage amplifier in lab three. The only thing I've done is I've increased the gain and added some feedback to create distortion because in lab three obviously I don't want you to make distortion but in this case I do and we've added some embellishments like a bypass switch and an LED and so this and lab three are essentially the same thing yet the applications seem particularly different and at the end of this video I will also give you a parts list if you want to build one again if you're a student of mine of course you have access to all these materials so I hope you enjoy the video, take a look, and make comments as necessary. So to begin the uh, process of creating the pedal, we want to start with our basic Hammond uh, aluminum enclosure. And as you can see, it's a raw enclosure. I just took off the uh, plastic wrap. Here is typically the top, but we're going to make that the bottom. And so this is going to be our top. And to do this correctly, we want to make sure that we start with a very clean surface. And so what I'm going to do is take this 150 grit sanding sponge, which is basically a piece of sandpaper on a sponge. You can use regular sandpaper. I like this because you can grip it. Uh, you get these from Harbor Freight Tools, pretty cheap, um, or anywhere else. Or just, again, use a regular sandpaper. And so, again, you want to make sure that the surface that you want to adhere to has got to have a very clean uh, aspect to it. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and begin the process of just sanding gently, maybe in circular motions. Uh, try to randomize uh, uh, so that you don't have a uniform groove on the surface. And you can go ahead and do this till you see that it's nice and shiny. Now we don't want to use the raw box by itself because we don't know what type of greases or oils that might be on it. And I like to have a uniform surface. So I do this all the time. So make sure that you do this as well even though it might look like right out of the box that it's pretty easy and clean.
So after about a couple minutes of uh, randomly sanding this, uh, this aluminum enclosure, I think we're just about ready. You can kind of take a look at it in the light and see that there are no missed spots and that we don't have a lot of grooves in it. It's kind of a random uh, buff to it. So that looks pretty good. Now we're not quite ready yet uh, to take the, uh, um, the transfer onto this surface because um, it has aluminum grit on it and so we're going to have to get rid of that. So I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to do that. And so um, it's amazing how much is really left on the surface even though you might think it's clean. So we're just going to put a little bit of um, alcohol here and you'll see right away that just by rubbing the alcohol on there you can see the black that's coming off. Um, that's partially due to the sandpaper and partially due to the aluminum that is on here. We want to make sure all of that is off and that we have a grease-free surface. And so as you do this you'll see more and more comes off as you rub harder and work the surface to get all of the residue uh, completely off of that surface. So I would rotate um, the paper towel a couple times maybe. And even though you might think it's clean, believe it or not, there's always still seems to be a little bit of residue on there. So after about a couple minutes of rubbing with the alcohol, it dries pretty quickly. You can see there's uh, a little bit of black there. You want to keep doing it, of course, until um, it's pretty much clean. One thing to keep in mind, once you're done, Try not to touch the surface uh, with your hand because the oil is on your hand. You want to make sure that there's no residual um, grease or oil, um, and the alcohol does a good job of getting off any of that if you happen to do if you do happen to touch it. There, I think now that's ready for the transfer. So here we're ready to go ahead and begin the transfer process. The surface has been cleaned and we have our um, you know, made up logo that we want to place on the surface. This is what's going to get etched. And as you look at this you can see that it's printed backwards and it's printed, it's printed negative. The reason why it's printed backwards is because when we flip it over and put it on the surface then it will look correct. So you got to make sure that you get the, the size correct and the, the logos that you want centered properly. That really goes beyond uh, what we're going to talk about here. You can use any of the number of uh, you know, programs that can do this kind of thing like Paint Shop Pro or uh, Photoshop or Paint. I'll leave that up to you. I used Visio uh, primarily to do this because that's what was available to me. So once you get that ready, you go ahead and print that on a standard laser printer, but what you do is you print it on label paper with the labels taken off. So you can see the back here. This is that shiny label paper, but the labels have been peeled off and thrown away. We don't need the labels, but we need that shiny backing. And so you print it on that shiny side with the labels removed. And again, you print it negative and backwards. And so with our surface clean, we're careful not to touch it with our fingers. We'll go ahead and take this and we want to place it centered here on the surface and I pre-cut a couple small pieces of just standard scotch tape and what I'm going to do is just tape this so that it won't move during the ironing process. So I'm just going to tape that down, one there and uh, one on the other end just so that it's flat and it doesn't move during the ironing process. Don't worry about the tape, whether that it's hot or not during the ironing process is really irrelevant. And so now we're ready to take this box and uh, transfer it using our iron. So now the box is ready for the iron on. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and use an iron. As it is cold, we're going to do it for about 10 minutes. And so we don't want to put the iron directly on top of the backing paper, so we'll just use this paper towel and we'll just cover the box with that. We'll go ahead and, and make sure that the iron's on maximum and with no steam. Uh, and then we're going to put the iron, center it right on top of the box. Uh, approximately 10 minutes, give or take. Uh, I'll show you a way to know when the box is essentially ready. So let's go ahead 
and turn it on. We're gonna let it go for about 10 minutes here and uh, when the side of the box sizzles to the touch when you wet your finger we'll know that it's done. So let's uh, let's give it at least eight minutes and see what happens. Okay so we're about eight minutes in. We can go ahead and, and move the iron back and forth a little bit. You might notice that the um, paper towel got discolored. The way you can tell that this is done is just wet your finger and touch the side of the box. If it sizzles and it's hot like that, then that means you've probably had enough heat and you're close to being done. If it's not sizzled like that, maybe your iron didn't get hot enough, it's important to get it hot enough so that you get that sizzle that kind of lets you know the heat has transferred uh, to the box. And so being that this one did, I think I'm pretty much done. I'm going to just remove the iron now and um, we can turn the iron off at this point and remove uh, the paper towel. It might stick a little bit to that uh, that tape that we put down, but you do not, do not want to take off uh, the backing. Uh, at this point, what you want to do is just allow the box to cool on its own. So it might take, you know, 15 minutes or so. Uh, don't try to rush it because uh, you don't want to remove that backing until the box is cooled to the touch. So the box is now cooled off and it's time to pull off the mask to see how the, the uh, image transferred. So I'm going to use a razor blade to ease off the tape and then uh, I'm going to then peel back gently uh, the backing to see how it went. So with just a gentle score here, we'll peel back and begin this process. And so as we peel this back, you can begin to see the image. And so here's the image fully developed on uh, the metal backing. And as you can see, it's not perfect. There are areas that are going to need to be touched up. And you're going to find that with every new one that you do, um, it's going to be different than the previous one. And because of that, each one of these is going to be unique. And that gives it kind of that road-worn appearance. Uh, some people strive for that. That's actually kind of what I was looking for. So really the next step is to go ahead and you know assess whether this is something that's good enough to take to the next step or should we start over. If you want to start over all you have to do is apply some acetone and then wipe away all of the toner and redo the process. There's no need to re-sand or uh, retouch the surface in any way. Just take it off with some acetone. I think that what we see here is acceptable. You can see that the detail on the lettering is pretty good. Um, there's going to be some touch up here where the toner didn't come through. And In fact, if you look at the backing, you'll see where the toner was left on the backing. Those are the areas that we're going to have to touch up. And really, they didn't occur on any of the critical areas, just this blank area right here, which is easy to do. So again, you're going to have to kind of take a look at it and decide whether you want to go with what you see here or whether it's worth starting over. So the next step is to prep this and touch it up and get it ready for etchant.